I have no way of knowing that you can hear me. <laughs> okay, okay, great, great. Okay, fantastic. Just want to make sure you guys can hear me well. I told you I was going to make it on time. I said I was going to make it on time. <laughs> Had to get the audio together. Navigating all this by myself is not an easy thing. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys all that. It is not an easy thing. Okay? If I'm looking over to... I'm assuming it's y'all left, but it's to my right. Um, it's because I'm looking at the monitor and I'm looking at, you know, the feed and things of that nature. Okay? And my camera is right there. My laptop is right here. So, you're going to see me looking down, up, and this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's get started with the show because we have a long show and I had I'm glad I waited because it seems there was some new news that came out about Britney Spears and all kinds of stuff about Kiki Palmer I was like okay I'm gonna add this to the show <laughs> yeah and then um Donald Trump you know we got to talk about politics so my politics people if you are in the comment section go ahead and horn in be nice though we don't want any rude people in the comment section okay now, I sound crackly or anything of the nature, people. All right, so let's get started with the show. First, I want to welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to welcome my truth seekers. Welcome my truth seekers to the show. Welcome. As I stated before, this will be a preview of a my comeback podcast. This is my own personal podcast, The Truth Show. I'm going to try to get guests to come on the show because I'm sure there's people all over YouTube or TikTok who's dying to speak to me and I've been kind of MIA and just not talking to anybody. I'm an Aquarius. I, I work alone and I prefer it that way, you know, aside from my daughter. But you know how we are, Aquarius. Any Aquarius is in the house? Oh, how y'all doing? <laughs> okay, anyway, like I said, I know it's been a while since I've done a show and I do apologize for that, okay? Um, however, however, in this podcast, we are going to be talking about a lot of, a lot of different things. Okay. We're going to be talking about Hollywood number one weight in the lifestyle section. Okay. Trump's indictment in politics, Tory Lanez sentencing, Megan Thee Stallion response, Lizzie or, or Lezo, how are you pronouncing that? I think or Lizzo. Sorry about that. Don't mean to disrespect you, Lizzo. I'm just not a dedicated fan of yours, so it's no pun intended. I'm just an observant fan. Anyway, Lizzo losing boyfriend and deals. Mago, or Magoo, I think that's how you pronounce his name, passing away. Kiki Palmer teaming up with Usher and more in celeb gossip. Oh, and Britney Spears. I just added that literally at the last minute, okay? And, of course, last but not least, in Brain Food, we're talking about the Book of Enoch. There's a revelation when the book of Enoch come out. There's a reason why a lot of people are all of a sudden um, reading the book of Enoch. But, but of course, as usual, before we get started, I have to give you the warnings. You, have, you got to have the warnings. You got to have the warnings. So let's go ahead and get that started. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I deeply researched all of my information. I'm just going to turn this all the way up. And I'll play that again just in case some of you missed it. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I deeply researched all of my information. Fantastic. Okay. And of course, there's one more warning. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Fantastic!
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. This and is we're gonna go ahead and move to lifestyle talk here. So welcome, welcome to lifestyle talk. It, it this is somewhat a repeated, repeated um, discussion. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but we talked about this before. Let me bring that back up here. This is somewhat repeated discussion topic. I talked about this currently. Um, this diet that's currently sweeping Hollywood from Kim, as you can see there, from um, Kim Kardashian to Khloe Kardashian to Black China, yes, Beyonce, Mariah Carey, and the list goes on and on of these individuals losing drastic weight in two months or less. I have seen people lose about 40 to 50 pounds in like two months. Seriously, it's crazy. Are you guys still with me? You are still with me, right? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, well, let me know in the comment section if you're still with me. Okay. Anyway, moving right along here. Okay, so it pretty much seems that um, they're all taking this drug called Ozempic. Ozempic. Okay. Okay. Um, it seems that they're taking this drug called Ozempic that can lead to quite a transformation. Apparently, this transformation, um, that's why you see them showing off their bodies and things of that nature. And they credit into the self-injected type 2 diabetes drug for curbing their appetite and eating less, as you can see here. Ozempic, they, you know, they put it in their side or butt or whatever area they can put it in. I'm not sure. I don't have diabetes, but you inject this little Ozempic drug here. It's for type 2 diabetes. Now, you got to understand, Ozempic isn't approved for weight loss, but that's, you know, it is not approved for weight loss. But, you know, people still use it. Even though it's not approved for weight loss, they still use it because they want to lose weight and they don't care if it's not approved for weight loss. <laughs> I mean, it has really famous side effects, which is losing weight. So some doctors have been prescribing an off-label, like under the table, for that purpose. I mean, of course they charge an obscene amount of money, but, you know, they're still using it. You know what I mean? Um, so this generally helps people with obesity seeking to lose weight. They can also um, turn to... This is called Wegovy. It's called Wegovy. Anyways, and Wegovy, or Vi, which contains semaglutide, the same active ingredient as in Zoxempic, and it's approved for weight loss. So that's why you're seeing these celebrities losing drastic amount of weight because they stick in this type 2 diabetes drug into their systems and they lose weight really, really fast. Are you guys still with me? Okay. Let me know if you're still with me in the comment section. Now, of course, the medication comes with some drastic side effects, okay? The most famous side effect that's pretty much that a lot of them are getting, which includes nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, stomach pain, and constipation, according to the Novo Nordisk, Nordisk the company that makes both Ozempic and Wegovy. And patients may also experience serious side effects such as pancreatitis, gallbladder problems, and kidney failure. I mean, it, they warn you not to take this stuff, but people needed to lose weight and they wanted to lose weight fast. So they use this particular medication because it helps them lose weight really, really fast. Like, for example, if you weigh 180 pounds, you take this drug, you probably lose about 30 pounds in one month. Even though there are people who are losing way more less than two weeks. Because you're sick all the time, you really cannot eat. And what it does is take the fat in, the carbs, the sugar from your system, just like it does for diabetes, and it turns that into, um, this is in blatant terms, it get rid of it, just like it does diabetes. So that's why they take it. You get to eat what you want, but you're not going to be hungry anyway, so technically you don't get to eat what you want. But... If you're okay with those side effects, and the side effects can actually be a little extreme, but I decided to leave it out for this little live podcast, but it is actually a more extreme than this in terms of the side effects. It's really, really extreme. But, you know, if you want to go ahead and take it, all you got to do is Google Ozempic, pay about a G, 2000 depends who's selling it to you, and you can lose drastic rate really, really fast. Yeah. 
a lot of them are taking it. It's literally sweeping Hollywood right now, which is really sick. But I guess if you're desperate to lose weight, you'll take anything. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you guys were wondering about the call, so let's get into that. That's the twist. Now, people haven't, you know, taken this little drug. Now, semaglutide for the drug, because that's what's in the drug, to keep it working. You have to keep taking this drug. I mean, you can take it and lose weight, but unless you're working out and keeping up with the diet, as soon as you stop taking it, there is a high possible chance you're going to lose your weight really, not, not lose, but you're going to gain your weight back really fast. So it's really imperative for you to keep taking this drug. So that's why I say it's that's why they say it's dangerous and they do give you warnings before taking this drug. But they don't want to work out because it's too much work. You know what I mean? It's too much work and they just don't want to deal with all that. So they just lazy. <laughs> They're gonna take this drug and eat what they want. If they get sick, they don't. They I mean people are just lazy. You know? People are lazy, seriously. I mean, a good workout and diet can definitely do it. Fasting can do it too. You know, intermittently fasting is really good for your soul and your body as well. But people don't want to do that. They want to lose weight really, really fast. I mean, there are people who actually do cocaine sometimes. There's a lot of celebrities who I heard do that on a regular basis to lose weight. I'm not going to say any names, but I heard that through the grapevine. It's really, really sick. But, you know, people do drastic things, okay? But here it is. Here, as I said, you got to keep taking this drug to maintain the weight that you lost because if you stop taking it you probably gain the weight back really really fast that's unless you keep up with the diet and considering it was too late to die in the first place then more than likely you're not going to keep up with it so they probably end up just gaining the weight right back <laughs> i'm just saying i mean because taking this drug too long and you don't have diabetes can really really cause serious health problems serious health problems seriously it's also very expensive. It may not be covered by insurance. The list price for this little drug here, the lowest you can probably pay for this drug is $900. The most you can pay is $1,300. And that's just a small dose of it. I mean, the Wegovy or Wegovy, I think it's Wegovy. That's the little um, drug that's in it. It's really strong. You know what I'm saying? I do have a video of it, and I probably mispronounced that, but I want you guys to take a look at it. Hey, there is a new weight loss trend taking over social media for users looking to shed some pounds. People are turning to a diabetes medication, leaving doctors concerned over a potential shortage as demand spikes. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has the story. This morning, Ozempic, a popular medication typically prescribed for people with type 2 diabetes, is reportedly being used off-label for weight loss by social media users. It's here. The FDA has reported intermittent shortages of the drug. Social media users like TikToker Alyssa Clayton praising the drug's results for slimming down. Alyssa sharing these before and after photos of the effects of the medication over the course of 18 months. I wanted something that was non-invasive. Being pre-diabetic, that's scary for me. I mean, if I'm 60 pounds lighter now than I was a year ago, I, I feel like that has increased the quality of my life and hopefully the length of my life. Ozempic, an FDA-approved treatment for type 2 diabetes, is known to improve blood sugar alongside diet and exercise to reduce the risk of major cardiovascular events such as heart attack, stroke, or death in adults with type 2 diabetes. Although Ozempic is not explicitly approved for chronic weight management, it can be prescribed off-label and used safely for this purpose for people who are obese. However, the weight loss drug, Wagovi, also made by Nova Nordisk, is FDA approved for weight loss. It's the same drug, semaglutide, but prescribed at a higher dosage. According to the FDA, both drugs are in short supply. One of the reasons we have a shortage of Ozempic is that a version of the same medicine called Wegovy has been approved by the FDA. But because of supply chain issues, it's been in very short supply. Mm. And so people have been using Ozempic instead. Nova Nordisk telling ABC News, we are currently experiencing intermittent supply disruptions on various doses of Ozempic due to the combination of incredible demand coupled with overall global supply constraints. While product continues to be manufactured and shipped, patients in some areas of the country will experience delays. 
We are making both short and long term investments to solve for these temporary challenges. People are special. I mean, to go to these drastic measures just to lose weight is ridiculous. I mean, my gosh. I mean, to go to these drastic measures to lose weight is freaking ridiculous. Freaking ridiculous. Okay, you say you take Ozempic and you say you promise it. Well, mm -hmm. how long have you been taking it? Miss Miss Archie, is that your name? You said you've been taking it. Oh, they're doubling it up. Yeah, yeah, I bet they are. Yes, that's probably why. Because I know that um, Kim Kardashian had to take it to lose all that weight to fit into the Marilyn Monroe dress that she bursted out and destroyed, which I'm still peeled about that. So I know that she took it. You know what I mean? Okay, Nicole, drive safe. Well, how much weight did you lose, Miss Archie? Oh, 18 weeks, okay. How much did you weigh before, before you start taking it? Okay, we're just such based on that, because I'm really, really curious. I was thinking about getting and do like a live trial with you guys. I probably look like Skeletor. Yeah, I don't think that's a really good thing for me to do. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. But I still want a boob job. I don't care. Oh, you did? That's great. Well, be safe now. Are you a diabetic? Is that why you're taking it? Or are you taking it for just, you know, for weight loss purposes? I'm just curious. I know, Nicole. I wouldn't take it either. But I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I need to quit. I won't take it. <laughs> but I do want a boob job, though. I probably don't need one, but I do want one. Because I don't like wearing bras, you know. With a boob job, you got to wear a bra. You just let the suckers hang. Nipples hard and everything. Just mother, just mother nature, you know. It's natural. <laughs> oh, okay. Really? Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to get back to you on that, honey. Because that sounds very, very interesting. Okay, so let's move on to the next subject. Next subject. We're going to move on to politics, 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 politics. And in politics, we're talking about, oh, for your health, okay. Oh, you said because your weight, okay. Well, good luck to you. Okay, we're going to be talking about politics, which is Trump. How many Trump supporters we have in the house? I'm just curious. If you're receiving buffering, I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know why every time I try to get on here, it just always gives me a hard time. It annoys the hell out of me. So freaking annoying. Not even fair, for real. I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway. So we're gonna talk about Trump here. All right, you know Trump is showing. It says here Trump is showing a few signs of faltering in his bid for the GOP nomination. Even as his legal challenges mount, Trump was hit with the fourth indictment late Monday night after Fulton County District Attorney Fan Willis charged Trump in connection with his alleged efforts to overturn. The 2020 election results in Georgia. Take a look at this. Because he's still tripping off Georgia. He's still saying that it was a rigged election and things of that nature. But they call him doing some things, which is really odd. I don't know how he's, you know, I'm, let's move on. to. The, I'll discuss that. I'll give my opinion later. I want to get into depth into it. Take a look at this video. Hopefully my internet don't act stupid. Former President Trump now facing a total of 91 criminal charges in four different cases in Georgia, Florida, New York, and Washington, D.C. You see the charges scrolling on the screen right now. The newest charges related to election subversion in the Atlanta area. The former president has until next Friday to turn himself in. Remember, the first Republican primary debate is next Wednesday. Joining us now, Republican strategist and former RNC communications director Doug High. CNN political analyst, White House correspondent for PBS NewsHour, Laura Brown lopez and former advisor to President Clinton, Paul Begala. Well, good morning, guys. Next week's going to be a big week, Doug. 
There's a <laughs> Republican you debate a video? that may or may not participate in, and then he and 18 other folks indicted in Georgia have to turn themselves in on these charges. But Trump is running on this. Is this one going to be any different? Because all of the others seem to have not hurt his support, maybe bolstered it. Yeah, the reality is, uh, Poppy, in the short term, no, this won't be any different. And the reason for that is twofold. One, every time that Donald Trump has been invited and I, er, indicted, and I'll say this is a bizarre statement, it, it bolsters Donald Trump because it reinforces his core argument. Typically, in politics, when you're indicted, you get in any legal trouble, your campaign is over. For Donald Trump, it reinforces his core message that the system is rigged, that it's against, rigged against you, it's rigged against me, it's rigged against everybody. And bizarrely, this shores up his message. Two, when he's been indicted, each time most of his opponents have not only not gone after Donald Trump, which in any other campaign you would do, they back up Donald Trump. They say, this is a two-tiered system of justice. So when your own opponents, the people running against you, fail to criticize you, that bolsters you as well. The debate, therefore, is going to be interesting because this case is different and we'll see if it makes Republican candidates who are running against Donald Trump run against him, move from running against him in theory to in practice and use this to do what they would do against any other opponent in any other race. And that's criticizing. I mean, so few have Asa Hutchinson put out a statement last night right. saying essentially I've prosecuted people under RICO statutes like this, et cetera. But so so few will go after him. Including the number two guy who's had a rough couple of months, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Laura, Doug kind of captures the, the point I've been fixated on, not just this morning, but I think over the course uh, of several months now. And keep in mind, over the course of four months, Trump has been indicted four different times in four different places. But our mutual pal, Peter Baker, the New York Times, has a great piece this morning where he really kind of captures it. It says, quote, the nation once recoiled at presidential candidates caught driving under the influence or swiping lines in a speech without credit. Now, one of the two major parties has not ruled out a front runner charged with conspiring to subvert democracy, endangering national security, obstructing justice and falsifying records of hush money to a pornographic film star. Is it because it's just so much that everybody has tuned out and or is numb? Or is it, which I think Doug's point is very smart on this, that this just kind of dovetails perfectly into what has been Trump's message from the beginning and has served as Teflon to some point? I think when we're looking at the primary, Doug's point totally stands, which is that the GOP base is behind the former president. Uh, I would argue a majority of the Republican establishment is behind the former president, or at least will not say anything and confront him directly. Uh, they will do it privately to us many times, but not publicly and directly to make a break from the former president. But when we look at the general election, I think it is having an impact because I was just talking to a Republican uh, registered Republican voter in Arizona, a swing state, another state that is actually looking into a fake elector scheme carried out by Trump in 2020. And that Republican voter had voted Republican their entire life, told me they voted for Joe Biden in 2020. One of those independent leaning, you know, uh, moderate Republicans who broke for Biden in that swing state last go around. And I checked in to see if they had soured on President Biden and were leaning back the Republican way, given the cast of uh, these candidates that, that this voter has to choose from. And they said no. And it was because of what Doug is saying, which is that none of the other Republicans that potentially have a shot of taking out the former president are actually confronting him on the democracy issue and on all of the indictments. And so he said there was no one there that he felt he could vote for. Um, I don't know if we have the Hillary Clinton sound. If we do, let's see if we can get it up for, for Paul's. Paul, because I just think you obviously were a former advisor to Bill Clinton. Um, Hillary Clinton talked about this. We'll play it in just a moment. But Joe Biden, the president, isn't, can't really talk about this because it's this Justice Department that is at the helm of the federal probes. But Hillary Clinton did weigh in. Here she was. Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard to believe. I, I don't feel any satisfaction. I feel great, uh, you know, just, just great profound sadness that uh, we have a former president who has been indicted uh, for so many uh, charges that went right to the heart of whether or not our democracy would survive. Hmm. Just your thoughts on this, because we're not going to hear that from Joe Biden. 
Yeah, I, I, I. Okay, we're gonna stop right there. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, you have a Trump supporter. Okay, he did more for our community than any other president. They're just trying to silence him. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on here. It says that this pretty much follow the other indictments level against Trump in the past several months. And you probably heard this in a video, two of which are the federal level. Despite of all of this, some Republicans says Trump legal challenges are a concern. Many argue that the controversies won't move the needle when it comes to the former president standing in the race. I mean, there's this is what they're saying. They're saying it doesn't even matter if he's uh indicted it doesn't matter of all these because he seemed to be holding a steady position in the race which i would never understand in a million years but i guess it does not matter i'm just saying <laughs> i mean he has a really a number of indictments and it's right there on the screen i screenshot it from that video earlier um it's just <sighs> It has no impact on his numbers at all. It has no impact on his numbers. The only issue that could shake Trump voters away is a piercing of his Teflon armor. Um, which means, like they said, a lot of the people who are supposed to be in his corner are not really in his corner from what I hear. But they're afraid to come out because Trump still have power. and He can, you know, you know how he is, okay? His Trumps are not idle. <laughs> you shouldn't take them idly, just saying. I mean, because he, he's pretty dangerous. So the only issue that could shake Trump voters away, like I said, is the piercing of his Teflon armor. If he loses in either Iowa or New Hampshire, I suspect the national numbers would change rapidly. I mean, this is what um, Arizona-based GOP alum Brian Sechik said. This is what he said here. Now, you guys say, as you know, Trump was indicted earlier this year in three separate probes. One concerning an alleged hush money payment to adult film star. I believe I have that slideshow here. Yeah, there it is right there. To adult film star, actress. One concerning his alleged mishandling of classified documents. And another one concerned of the aftermath of the 2020 election, including the January 6, 2021 Capitol attack. Remember that? So that's what he's currently um, getting in trouble for at the moment. But I'm just saying, it's just not going to do anything for him. So that comment that I just read before this was from him. See? that's That was from him. If you guys want to know that. All right, so we're done with politics. I don't want to talk about politics anymore because I get too pedo about that. Trump said a lot of things, Autumn. He said, grab P. He... <sighs> I, you know, I don't have the emotional capacity to talk about, talk about Trump right now. And I'm done. I have, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't even want to do any comments on it because I'll get too upset and I need the energy to talk about celeb gossip and brain food. So we're just going to move on to celeb. Okay, and of course, in celeb gossip, we're talking about Tory Lanez, Megan Thee Stallion, Lizzo, Magoo, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce his name, Kiki Palmer, we're talking about them people, so let's go ahead and get started here. Alright, first comes up is Tory Lanez, and Megan Thee Stallion, that's an old picture of her, but I don't like getting new pictures, so I kind of recycle the same pictures over and over and over again, okay, because... I just like doing that. Okay. Now it shows here that Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion has been reported that the rapper Tory Lanez could have somewhat avoided his lengthy jail stay. According to a reporter, apparently according to a reporter covering the trial, pr the presiding judge made it very clear how impactful the musician post-shooting actions were in deciding his 10-year prison sentence. So it's really crazy because he could have avoided his 10-year prison sentence if he just pay attention in case you're unfamiliar 31 year old canadian rapper tory lance real name is daystar Pe peterson was recently sentenced to a decade behind bars for shooting fellow 28 year old rapper megan pete aka megan the stallion back in 2020 okay if you guys didn't know that if you need to know the picture that's the picture right there megan the stallion back in 2020 following an argument many have 
Many have since debated whether or not Tory's sentence was fair, though he was convicted to three felonies. He was convicted to three felonies, okay? Now, according to this journalist, okay, according to the legal affairs journalist Megan Cuniff, who has been covering the trial since it began, said it was Lance Action himself that held the most weight in the judge's decision. Cuniff recently shared that the judge emphasized the musician's post-shooting conduct and how it was a major factor when considering how long he would serve in jail. That's what she stated. She stated this in our call, as you can see on the screen there. It's hard to say how much remorse would have affected his sentence, but the judge made really clear that he thought the post-shooting conduct was a major aggravating factor in the case. He even used the word major. The idea that he would have gotten 10 years if he just kept his freaking mouth shut about the whole thing. I think that's kind of out of the question. I'm sure he would have gotten a lesser sentence. The judge really sent the message that he thought the post-shooting conduct was a real issue. So this journalist is saying that he probably would have just got a charge. Because I think Megan Thee Stallion actually dropped the charge. She didn't want to charge him anymore. But I think the state charged him or something. She was done with it. Megan Thee Stallion is Aquarius. We get over it. We're done. Okay. Whatever. Move right along here. You know. I lived. And that's pretty much what it is. But he kept talking about it. I think he put her in a song or something like that. I don't follow Megan Thee Stallion or Tory Lanez. I'm going to be delivering this news because you guys want to hear. But I don't, I'm not a, that huge a fan of them too. To be honest. But. I did cover some of the news feed, you know, news stories with these two. And he did talk about her a lot. He kind of ruined her reputation for some part of it. If he would just let it go and then talk about it, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You know, take a number out of freaking um, Jay-Z book, Quiet Mode, you know, Silence is Golden. People would have forgotten about it. And it would just been a past story. But he just didn't want to, he just couldn't shut up. And that's, that was his problem. He couldn't shut up. <laughs> but anyway, now this journalist went on to discuss how the judge referenced the legal implications of Lance blatantly showing no regard or regret for his actions. Reportedly, the judge referenced the phone call that Lance made apologizing to Megan. So at some point, he did apologize to Megan. It didn't do any good, but he did apologize to her for, you know, for whatever reason. But he already laid the damage already so it was pretty much over from there <laughs> okay now i know you remember then bff kelsey nicole who was also present for the shooting during the sentencing if you recall if you recall the rap star contacted kelsey from jail after the incident explaining how he was too intoxicated yeah he said he was too intoxicated and didn't mean to harm anyone. Despite the admission, vilify Megan actively denying that he or Kelsey shot her. And often tried to cast doubt of her account of the situation in its silence. So he tried to make it seem like the whole thing was made up. He really didn't shoot her. It was just a bad dream. So he literally tried to play mind games. And that's what the problem is. The state charged, yeah, the state charged him to go. That's why. And it was his fault because he can't keep his mouth shut. It was his fault. Now, here's what Megan Thee Stallion had to say about the situation. She said, I, I overcame the public humiliation of having my name and reputation dragged through the mud by that individual for the entire world to see. So, she, yeah, you got to admit, he kind of did screw her over. I mean, she didn't really say too much about him from what I gather, but please correct me in the comment section. She didn't say too much about him, but he was just running his mouth all the time. This and this and this, this and this and that. He should just shut up. You know, <laughs> just shut up. Gosh, you got to do what the old school criminals do. Quiet. You know, Jay-Z, he just be back there like. He don't even got a social media page. Out of sight, out of mind. Very true words. Very true words. Follow it. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the next subject here. I already said my, my um, analyst. I'm not going to even, you know, my analysis. I'm not going to even talk about this anymore. So let's move on to the next subject. Okay. Lizzo. Lizzo split with her boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. 
But Lizzo has denied splitting up with her long-term boyfriend, Mike Wright, as the star scandal surrounding the sexual harassment lawsuit continues to rumble on. So she denied being... So he's kind of fine, too. Go ahead, Lizzo. And what the hell she got on? Are those cones? Okay, she's very brave. Very, very brave young lady. All right, I'm going to move on from that. <clears throat> Anyway, she denied that they broke up or whatever. I guess in you know, time we freaking tell. You know. Again, I don't follow Lizzo like that. It's been two weeks since three of Lizzo former backup dancers filed a lawsuit, a civil lawsuit, against her citing sexual harassment in a hostile work environment. A lawsuit that has sparked a lot of backlash for Lizzo in the days since it was filed. Here's what Lizzo said about these allegations. She said these last few days have been gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing my work ethic morals and respectfulness have been questioned my character has been criticized usually i choose not to respond to false allegations but these are unbelievable as they sound and too outraged to not be addressed lizzo said in a statement posted on social media august 3rd take a look at this video let me know if you guys believe this you know over the years we have seen kind of the treatment of dancers, some might even say the mistreatment of dancers depicted in media. But I'm curious, what working with Lizzo, was there a specific moment or incident where you felt like this was crossing the line and it's actually more of a toxic work environment? Many um, instances. I, I can't pinpoint one. I can probably count at least 10 um, just right off the bat. I mean, just um, inviting us to sexually explicit um, things a lot of times without our knowledge. Um, of knowing that there was going to be nudity there, um, you know, telling us that we need to be a family and, you know, uh, invite us to be sister-like, have a sisterhood, but then turn around and never give us the benefit of the doubt and believe the microaggressions being put forth towards her um, by management about us. Um, just, just having these really intense meetings about um, how we're not being dancing good enough and we're, we're you know, all kinds of allegations that you know we work really hard so we know are not true those meetings that you're talking about mm -hmm. did it feel like to you like this is not like the mo of the industry this is not an industry standard it felt different well i personally and crystal are very new to the industry noel has been in the industry for a while but um this is me and crystal's first job so for a long time um in, in my time in the camp i just chalked this up to you know this it's probably just industry standard or like even if it's not you know it can't be that bad you know the industry is crazy i made a lot of excuses for lizzo and the management team um until enough was enough when i finally was out of it right crystal what was that breaking point for you the breaking point for me was for there to be blatant lies that were being spread about us and what we uh were doing or how we were conducting ourselves mm. and then after you know communicating our um our, our sides of the Story, or at least attempting to, uh, it felt like we were, you know, retaliated against. It felt like it was disregarded. It felt like it was ignored. It felt like it was uh, overlooked. It's just to make matters worse, for it to be with this particular artist who stands, you know, for the things that she stands for and the messages that she preaches, you would never in a million years think that that would be something that you have to deal with and that you have to go through. And Noel, you um, actually, you resigned. I did. You resigned. So what led to that decision? Well, me personally, I've been dancing professionally for about seven years now, so I have past experience. Mm. I've worked with a lot of these people that Lizzo looks up to herself, like Beyonce, Janet Jackson, yeah. and so on. So I know what is right and what is wrong in a work setting and, and the norms for this industry. And, you know, at, at first, it, small things would happen, and I was like, oh, maybe it's a miscommunication between her and her management, you know, I'm trying to always give the benefit of the doubt maybe at the it's beginning. Maybe a personality thing. Yeah, or... maybe maybe she, she just has to warm up to us. Like, mm. and I had even questioned former former dancers that are no longer a part of the camp. Like, is it usually like this? She's like, right. no, just give it some time. But over time, it was a slow like downward spiral mm. of, you know, finally getting to the point of for me the biggest point that was the turning point in all of this was um, when we asked for our retainer, which is like a holding fee, that is a standard norm and the rest of the talent on the tour was already receiving. We were like, hey, you know, it's a norm that dancers can ask and should receive, especially if everyone else is receiving. So that was the turning point and I think the moment in which, you know, tensions started rising between management, Lizzo, 
and the dancers. But there's also also Lizzo in this too, who's probably feeling the same way. We saw in her statement today that it's inflicting some pain on her as well. Was there ever uh, an opportunity for you guys to rectify this in a different way that didn't involve lawyers? I can, for one, speak for myself that even before all of this transpired, while we were actively working with her, the collective dance cast had multiple, made multiple attempts to speak with not only her management team, but also her, just to let make her privy of all the things that we were going through and experiencing. Uh, it never happened. Noelle, you alleged that Lizzo aggressively confronted you for resigning. Can you kind of detail that experience? Yeah, so basically it was our last meeting. We were under the impression that it was a fitting. We show up shortly after, we're then met by security and her management team, and they're like, this is actually not a fitting, this is an a meeting with Lizzo, an ambush meeting, and then we're told to um, get hand over our phones. They're like, we're gonna, we need to confiscate your phones. Security takes them, and then she therefore comes in to later on fire Ari, and then, you know, just- In front of y'all. In front of everyone, in front of everyone. Uh, her management was there, security, herself, and the rest of the dance members were also wow. there. So within that, you know, I had planned on resigning a bit earlier. I had been in talks with my agent about, you know, I'm gonna do this professionally, give my two weeks, because up until then it was an accumulation of things. But just seeing how she had first handled the situation with Ari and how she let her go previously with the way that they let Crystal go, I was like, I can't stand for this anymore and I have to say something. Yeah. So in coming forward and saying that, she then got physical. Um, she basically raised up her fist. She was like bawling her knuckles and she's like, you're so effing lucky, alluding to you're lucky I'm not gonna hit you. Enough to where oh, wow. one of the dancers, you know, finally got up and had to pull her back because at that moment we were like, oh, she's actually going to hit me and physically had to pull her back. Uh, While well, then she's yelling all these different names and things, and you know it was yeah it was it was scary and it was shocking. Ariana, what do you hope to accomplish through this lawsuit? I just really, um, at this point, I don't need like an apology or even um, understanding. I just need change, oh. um, and I need dancers and other people in the industry and just people in general that are being taken advantage of, that you have a voice. I think you just have to know your rights. I've learned so many things about my rights as a dancer and what is what is deserved and what is the norm of being on set and how I should be treated by these artists and teams. So I, you know, I think anybody that pursues this, this industry just needs a lot of tough skin mm -hmm. and they need to understand that, you know, as much as it may seem uh, really glamorous from the outside, Sometimes it's not as glamorous as it as it seems, you know. So, just to be realistic with yourself and kind of have those check-in moments to say, you know, am I mentally okay to take this on? Mm -hmm. Because it is a lot to take on. Wow, that's crazy. I don't know what to say about that. I don't even know. I don't know what to believe. They girls look very sincere, you know. They do. But don't get discouraged. Beyonce still show love to her. This is what Beyonce said at one of her live, live concerts at life. <laughs> uh, yeah, so here it is. <laughs> Y'all heard? Let me play it again. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems that, you know, she's still getting loved by the celebs. So that's good. That's good. Okay, so we're going to move on here. What do you guys think in the comment section? Do you think the girls was telling the truth about this whole situation or you think they're just making it up? I don't know what to believe. I'm being honest with you. I don't know what to believe. Honestly, I don't know what to believe. So let me know what you think, you guys. I just want to know what y'all, how y'all feel about this whole situation. Yeah, I think um, the girls are telling the truth. You believe them? Okay. That's what I'm saying. They seem pretty, they don't seem like they're lying, you know? I, and normally I, um, Hmm. I don't know. They seem like they're telling the truth to me, but I I don't really, you know, I could be wrong. I feel that they're telling the truth, that they're not making up this whole thing. But again, you know, I don't know. I don't follow Lizzie like that. So I'm just going to leave that to you guys. But the girls seem like they are telling the truth to me. 
they don't look like they're or seem as if they're um, lying. But again, I could be wrong. So you guys let me know how that goes. You said, hold on, what you said, Nicole? You said, I I bet remember when Beyonce backup singer came for, oh yeah, yeah, about her being a witchcraft. Yeah, yes, I remember that, yeah. I heard that Tina knows supposed to be a witch too, but I'm not sure if it's true or not. I heard that they come from a line of witches. I had no me too nap. I do. I believe them too. I do. If I'm wrong, I mean, hey, apologize, Lizzo. But they don't seem like they lying. I mean, they don't seem like they're lying. But, you know, people are good actresses when it comes to money. Did they say they wanted money? What exactly are they threatened for? I'm just curious. Are they threatened money? I didn't look in depth into the story. So is money they're after or no? Okay, we just got to move on from that subject because we still have stuff, other stuff to talk about. Okay, all right, my next subject here is we talking about Kiki Palmer. Now, I know you guys remember Kiki Palmer and Darius Palmer. That's her baby daddy. And Usher um, featuring Kiki Palmer in the video, in his music video. We're talking about that. This just came out today. Okay. Now, I know you guys remember a month ago, a month and a half after Darius Dalton Jackson caught caught heat for critiquing the outfit that Kiki Palmer wore to Usher's show. If you listen to my daughter and I podcast, we went heavy into that subject. I'll leave the link below so you can check it out again. But there's a little brief preview of what they were talking about. Okay. It pretty much says that, put it like this. Now I predicted, I predicted that Kiki was just getting started. And Usher, I believe, is using that spotlight to his advantage, even though he don't need it. But, you know, good publicity. Publicity in general is supposed to be good. Okay? So, he's definitely using that to his advantage. That's what I'm thinking. Now, it seems that Kiki Palmer is said to serve as the leading lady in the singer's upcoming music video. Here's a preview. I hope I don't get, you know, shut down for this. But we'll find out. <laughs> Here's a preview for his video. That's all I got for that. I think she look good. She can dance. I forgot that um Kiki Palmer can dance. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm moving forward here. I think she's just getting started. And I'm just going to go ahead and move on from that. Okay, our next subject we're talking about here. And I'm going to speed this up. We probably not even brain, brain food today because I think we've been live way too long here. Uh, the next subject we're talking about, Magu, I'm assuming that's his name. Um, he died. It seemed like Magu passed away on August 14th. A rapper who was... A foundational member of a groundbreaking hip-hop scene that emerged in Virginia in the 1990s, collaborating with upcoming stars like Timbaland, Missy Elliott, and Pharrell Williams. He died over the weekend in Williamsburg, Virginia. He was 50 years old. The death was confirmed Monday by his wife, Miko. That's him right here in the back there, you see? That's him right there in the back. Yeah, his death was confirmed by his wife, Miko, who said that the coroner's office was investigating the cause. So, Magu, assume that's how you pronounce his name, whose birth name was Melvin Barcliff, was a child when rap music was first heard on radio, and he credited up with helping save him from a difficult childhood. So, hip-hop definitely saved his life. That's what a lot of them said when they first got into hip-hop. I'm not going into deep into this, but may he rest in peace. My condolences to his family and friends and in honor of his loss. I want to do a moment of silence, if you don't mind, even though a lot of you are not even where I'm at right now. But, you know, when you get here, I want to do a moment of silence. All right, may he rest in peace. Okay, moving right along here. We have some breaking news, people. Breaking news. Ooh. 
Yes, this is about Britney Spears. It has been broken news today. It actually got broken today. Like a couple hours ago, I'm assuming. Yes. Apparently, she's splitting with her husband, Sam Ashigari or Hari. Take a listen to deals. Venus retrograde came for Britney too? It is being reported that Britney Spears and husband Sam Asgari have split and are quickly headed for divorce. Just a year after tying the knot and just two months ahead of her tell-all memoir. With TMZ being the primary source, we can't automatically take this story as fact, but it's rumored that their relationship has had issues for a while. Britney Spears and husband Sam Asgari have separated after a nuclear argument that involves allegations of cheating. Sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ about a week ago, Sam confronted Britney over rumors she stepped out on him. We do not know if the rumor has any basis in fact, but we're told Sam believed it and the two had a huge fight. Wasn't it also rumored that she cheated on JT? Which was why he made Cry Me a River? Sources say Sam has moved out of their house and is now living in a place of his own. As one source put it, it's only a matter of time before Sam files for divorce. TMZ broke the story that there has been deep trouble with the couple's union for months. Sam wasn't sleeping at the house much and we're told Britney has gotten physical with him in blowout fights that include frequent screaming matches. Britney has a prenup which protects her assets, but one insider tells TMZ the likely end to the marriage will be a check from Britney to Sam that will settle things, at least financially. Well, shit. I guess third time wasn't the charm. Oh, wow. Well, she got a tight prenup, so she should be good. But still, he's going to probably want some spousal support and other support or whatever the case may be. So we already know how that's going to turn out. Mmm, Britney, Britney, Britney. V what do you guys think in the comment section? I don't know how he passed away, Nap. They didn't really give me information. They said the coroners are still, you know, determining that. So I'm assuming they're going to release some kind of news about that. So as soon as I get it, I will post it on my community chat for you guys. All right. So we're going to move on to Brain Food, where we're going to be talking about E, the Book of Enoch. We're going to move on to Brain Food, where we're talking about the Book of Enoch. Okay. All right. The book of Enoch is here's pretty much a preview here. This is a pre preview of my next video because I'm doing a whole little breakdown of the book of Enoch. You see the Bible was written because I, I think a lot of you people probably don't even know about this already. Um, you see the Bible was written in 1300 BC between 1300 BC and 100 AD 1400 years ago. Few of its many authors have been I have not really been identified <laughs> no original manuscripts have been brought forth just copies so no one really has the original copies of the bible and it's been heavily edited the book of enoch was one of the dead sea scrolls in jordan Qumran k4 which added to our knowledge of Eth ethiopia one of the books discovered is from a more extensive work called enoch or ethiopic Enoch. So what have we learned from this? Well, we realize that the Bible scripture is not authentic and has been excessively freaking edited from the original manuscripts, not to mention most of the disciples of Jesus didn't know how to read or write. You guys knew that, right? They were likely dead or killed long before the Bible's New Testament was allegedly written. That is why most scriptures were written in the name of, not by, However, scholars will argue all of this, but are we surprised about that information? Here's just a quick snip video I want you guys to check out. Did you know that in the ancient biblical text of the Book of Enoch, there's vivid descriptions of multiracial aliens called Anunnaki who went against God and slept with the daughters of men and they bore great giant offspring? Enoch, who was the great grandfather of biblical Noah, also known as Zisudra, recounts Noah being albino with blue eyes and a son of Enki, the Sumerian water god. Interestingly, the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD chose to exclude this book from the Bible due to its detailed accounts of encounters with alien beings known as the Anunnaki, who interacted with our ancient ancestors. Today, we're going to reveal the complete historical records from the Book of Enoch and the Lost Book of Enki shedding light on these events from ancient times. Enoch, a righteous and just man favored by the Lord God Enki, described a time before the first great flood. He witnessed extraordinary events, such as being taken up into the sky in a burning disc or chariot, where he saw the earth as a massive sphere, which in modern terms, this could be interpreted as an experience of being on a spaceship. 
viewing the planet Earth from beyond its atmosphere. During Enoch's time, humanity was peaceful, offering rituals and sacrifices to both their god and gods. Ritually, these gods accepted the offerings and stored them for later use, thus no longer needing to farm or grow their own food on this planet, the humans could do it for them. Enki, a compassionate, wise but lustrous water god, was left in charge of Earth after his brother Enlil was away off planet. He held great affection for human men and also the daughters they produced. This led to him having relations with Lame's wife, Betanos. Lamech, the grandson of Enoch, was driven and overjoyed to hear the birth of a son from Betanos. Little did he know the great shock that awaited him. The following verse from Book of Enoch 105 reads, After a time, my son Mathusala took a wife for his son Lamech. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child, the flesh of which was as white as snow and red as a rose, the hair of whose head was white like wool and long, and whose eyes were beautiful. When he opened them, he illuminated all the house like the sun. The whole house abounded with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, opening also his mouth, he spoke to the Lord of Righteousness. Then Lamech his father was afraid of him, and flying away came to his own father Mathusala, and said, I have begotten a son unlike to other children. He is not human, but resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven, is of a different nature from ours, being altogether unlike to us. Enoch's depiction in this passage reveals that Noah, also known as Zisudra, possessed the distinctive trait of being an albino. He bore striking physical resemblances to some of messengers and deities, commonly referred to as the Anunnaki. This uniqueness set him apart from other humans, as the descendants of Adam had a dark skin complexion during this time. Now, I said this a long time ago in a video that the fallen angels were albino and people literally crucified me in the comment section. Nothing new there. I'm used to that. So, stay tuned for that Did video, which is going to be coming out soon.